man. That soundtrack. Oh, that soundtrack right there stinks of stale potatoes and vodka right there. Oh! Hey guys, welcome to Workers Out Resources, Soviet Republic. The way I like to describe this game is it is city skylines, but just way more depressing and Soviet. Every day I wake up and I'm like, you know what the city building genre of games is missing? COMMUNISM! So this game has only just come out, and most importantly, I have not played it before, so I'm 100% gonna fail a couple of times here, but don't worry, uh, I will just keep going until I make a successful communist utopia that actually works. That's right, we're gonna make communism work today, boys. Oh man, I, I we're just in, and already, I, it feels pretty damn Soviet, doesn't it? Could be a lot grayer, though. That's, that's my one tip for the developer, make it more gray. So I'm in a Soviet city building game, and I don't immediately develop a drinking habit and a mild form of depression upon entering the game. You're clearly not doing it right. You really need to get me inside of the game. Immersion. Oh, there you go. Mud roads. Now I'm getting immersed into the game. Right, so first things first, I, I think I figured out that we need to connect everything to these custom buildings here, because that's where all our goods are going to be exported from. Although, why are we exporting stuff, eh? That sounds a bit capitalistic. Hmm? You just sat down and wondered, hey, where the hell do Soviet roads come from? Who puts them down? Are they made by workers? Maybe some sort of equipment? No, they're just born out of thin air from the ghost of Vladimir Lenin! Oh my god, the possibilities of commie blocks is absolutely limitless. Which ones do I want? Oh, look at it. It's so beautiful. I might, might, okay, this first town, by the way, is gonna look absolutely disgusting, okay? But just bear with me, alright? Soviet engineering and architecture is a thing to behold, and we will make a beautiful city. Right, so I have no idea how the industry actually works, but um, I'm going to go ahead and say the gravel is probably the most Soviet of exports that I can think of. Famous phrase right there, Joseph Stalin said himself, the, the Soviet Union was founded and built upon the backs of the gravel miners. Definitely a little confused by this Soviet science where buildings just sort of birth from the ground. I'm telling you people, it's the gravel. The Soviets are just gravel people coming out of the ground. Oh man, but these commie blocks are looking pretty damn good. I don't know exactly how the people are right. Oh, speaking of which, they just sort of appear out of the ha Oh my god, there's so many of them. Like, the, the houses just came out of the ground from the gravel people. Then the gravel people came out of the damn houses dressed as humans. Oh, wait a second. All the gravel people... They're all going to work at the gravel factories. Oh my god! Uh, I think the gravel mines are working. I, I have no idea. I literally can't figure out for the life of me if this is right. Pretty sure I am successfully uh, role-playing the Soviet Union pretty well right now, though. Yuri, the economy! I don't get it! Yeah, I can't really tell if our people are actually some sort of sentient Earth creatures or they are actually just Russians because... They sure do act like they could be Eva, really, couldn't they? Weirdly enough, when they uh, turn up at the bus station, sometimes they just disappear. It's very odd. Now, I could get a bus from, you know, the Eastern Soviet bloc, or I could get one from the West, which is way more renowned for having reliable motor vehicles. Unlike the Soviets. Oh my god, look at that little West German bus do what it does. It just killed a person. Oh my god. Yeah, for the whole Soviet Union thing, there's not really any rules for how traffic flow should go along with pavement. So, uh, the, the people just seem to, yeah, they just walk straight into traffic. There we go, bus turned up. Take everybody to their mandatory workstation at the gravel pit. Uh, I think I messed it up somewhere. I don't know how, I don't know when, but now the, the little West German bus that could has a question mark above it. Also, the game's not paused. Um, the NPCs are equally as confused as the buses. Nothing like seeing hundreds of Soviets simply disappear when they walk into the coal mine. Ah! Oh, wait, hold on a second. The coal mine needs power. Okay, I got power for you one sec. Ah, this thing, this thing oozes power. You see, comrade, if the uh, the workers ever stop working, all you need to do is give them a bit of encouragement from the man himself, Mr. Lenin. You don't need electricity when you've got Lenin. Right, so after our little test city right then, I've gone ahead and quickly remapped and rebuilt the city on a new save, and uh, I've actually kind of figured out what I'm supposed to be doing now. 
So obviously we've got our coal mine, which is now working. It's gathering coal, which goes to the coal ore processing plant, which takes the coal over to the coal power plant, which goes ahead and powers the entire city. That's right, boys. Communism right now by the truckload is working. Albeit, if this was a nuclear power station, I guarantee it would have exploded about five minutes ago. But now we've got the energy issue fixed. We need to figure out the money issue. We need to make some money, even though there is a little help thing right here in the help Q&A section that says, why do I need money within a socialist society? Which has got me equally confuzzled. All right, we're going to give farming a shot, but I'm not 100% sure if this is going to work. But uh, we'll tell if I, I bankrupt my whole economy over um, farmland. But we'll see. The farming, farming is very slow, so in the meantime, we've got to make a bit of extra money just in case, you know, we, we go bankrupt. Or I don't know what happens if you go bankrupt in a communist society. The way we're going to do that, you ask? Iron. That's right. I'm somewhat of a Minecrafter myself. And by me, I obviously mean the 50 poor Russians that I have down in the mine right now. You actually have two options for your exports. You can either go to a Western one, which will give us dollar dues, or we can go to a Russian one, which will give us rubles. So I've got a uh, American one right here, which I'm going to go ahead and take my first shipment of iron to. And we'll see just how many dollar dues this iron's going to get me. I'm imagining we're going to get quite a bit. That's right, Uncle Sam. I'm coming over. You're going to drop that capitalistic greedy money into my pockets and I'm gonna use it to fund the revolution. Here we go! Did I- did I actually just make five dollars? Now you can also put down oil rigs, but there actually isn't any land for us to actually get oil around here. You can tell by the little red circle around it. If it's either yellow or green, that tells you there's oil around. So unfortunately we can't do that just yet. Well, you know what they say, communism. If you fail once, just Try it again and again and don't really change what you're doing, but this is town number three. You see Yuri in Soviet Russia, tractor, just drive by ghost of Lenin. It's even more scary, so it's not even trailing any farming equipment. It's just running over the field and the sheer power of the wheels is sowing the field. Oh man, I'm really role-playing the ineptitude of the Soviet Union right now because I, I was wondering why my coal mine wasn't working. It's because I put down an iron ore processing plant instead of a coal ore one. <laughs> yeah, the problem with my population is not stagnating, it's not growing, it's not dying out. They're escaping. We're gonna have to fix that one way or another, if you know what I mean. Hey, I should do it. I just put a whole bunch of statues of Lenin around there, some communist icons and stuff like that, just to, you know, if people come to the border, they're gonna feel pretty damn guilty about leaving, especially since I put down the Comrade Bar. That's right, guys. Get a vodka on me. And then get shot. Another way of rooting out the traitors is to put down a tennis court. Something that is definitely a symbol of the West. And as you can see, as people go into it, they disappear, never to be seen again. Ah, I put down a fire station. The first one I've ever put down in this game so far, because I haven't really seen anything set on fire. But I do need to get some vehicles, you know, some fire trucks to actually obtain and manage the, the fires. And, um... I definitely trust the Polish one the most, I think. I, I, I can't see a Polish fire truck seemingly being a problem. Wait a second. After I put down the fire station, a fire broke out. Are you kidding me? Where, where even is this damn fire? Oh, there you go. So my vehicle storage built. Oh my god. Okay, where is the fire truck? Where are the Polish fire trucks? Can anybody see them on the map right now? I'm looking. Just keep an eye on the roads. If you see one today, let me know because I, I can't. Where the hell are my fire trucks at? Oh, there he is! I am very interested in how this Polish fire truck is going to put this fire out. Now, remember, this Polish truck apparently was in service until 1998. So, it's got to have worked. They, they would have replaced it if it did not work. So, here we go. Polish fire truck. How are you going to put out the fire? They crashed into the side of the building. <laughs> Well done, Poland! <laughs> Great way of keeping people entertained, preoccupied, and most importantly, part of the propaganda machine, cinematography! Although, if you can tell the difference between what looks like a Soviet cinema and a Soviet torture chamber, please, for the love of God, let me know, because I definitely can't. You see, comrade, to maximize efficiency, bus must bend. True hero of the Soviet Union, Bendy Bus! At all, comrade, spent all money on Bendy Bus! <laughs> Right, okay, last try, and this time around, we're gonna do nothing but just cheap export. So we're gonna do oil, we need to find some oil. Oh! Comrade! Oil! 
Right, so oil is very, very easy to produce. All you need is power, you don't need workers. All you need to do is get trucks to come pick it up every now and again. So I think this is definitely how we make money. I got a whole fleet of little trucks to come up and pick all the oil up now and again. And we're gonna take it to the border and I guarantee we're gonna make the maximum buccarinos. Well, first truck's going up and... Oh, oh. I mean, it's now five dollars. That actually looks like it's gonna... We did it! Communism? It's been achieved! I mean, all of my people are like running away and starving to death, but we're making money! So now that I understand how the game works, I think I'm gonna end it off here, which is very funny. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this nonetheless. It's just my first look into the game. It's actually pretty fun, albeit very bare bones at the, mi at the minute. I do think they'll go ahead and like add way more to it though. But if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, hit the subscribe button down below, and most importantly, I forgot to mention it in my other video, but right now, there are Cool Math Games t-shirts. That's right, your boy has got very special t-shirts to celebrate 400k subscribers. If you want to get one, they are on the store right now. Simply click on the link in the description. And I, of course, 100% appreciate anyone that buys any of my merch and anyone that leaves a like and subscribe. And thank you ever so much for getting me to 400k subscribers, obviously, guys. But till next time, let me know if you want to see more of this game, and I'll catch you around. Oh,